Hello world, and thanks for joining us here on another episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Uh, today's episode is going to be advanced VOR tracking, and we're going to do that in the Cessna 152. And this is also the fairing edition with the JP Logistics mod. Go ahead and post a link to that down below. So before we hop into cockpit, I'm going to show you our intended flight course for today. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I'd love to welcome you. And uh, also ask that you go down below and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. This way you don't miss any of our future videos just like this one. Thanks for watching. Uh, We're going to be starting over at uh, Wilson Creek and ending up here at Efrat Municipal, which is right down here. So uh, VOR tracking, we're not going to use any GPS guidance today other than this VOR that we've got right here. And um, as you can see, our tracking path, uh, this pink line right here that goes through this compass rose. Um, now, the first thing when you look at this uh, an advanced VOR training, um, the first thing you're going to think of is, well, I want to get to here and I'm over here. My pink line goes right here. So it's probably right around this 60 degree mark is where I got to go. Uh, but you would be completely incorrect with that. Um, and, and here's the reason for that. Uh, whenever you're tracking into a VOR, now this is when you're going into a VOR now, you want to draw that line all the way through that compass rose until you come out the other side. That is what's going to be your tracking uh, coordinates. So if you did that, you would be tracking at a right around a 245 uh, if we were to draw this line straight through this compass rose. So that's going to be the direction we're going. We're also going to show you how to figure out if you're going to a VOR or away from a VOR. That will make a big difference uh, when you're trying to get closer to somewhere, um, especially if you're going further away from it. So we're going to show you that today and more coming up on Advanced VOR Tracking. So if you haven't seen this mod before, it's really cool. Um, all the doors, windows work on this particular mod. Uh, makes it really immersive by having all of these features in this JP Logistics mod. Uh, and they do it for the community for free, so uh, I can't give them enough props for doing that. Uh, the other thing that's cool in this mod are all of these breakers do actually function. So they not only pop out, but they function so it will turn off your radios or engine or whatever they're actually tied to so we're going to show you that here in a second uh, the other thing that this plane has over here is a cool little autopilot so it's not going to track a gps track for you because it doesn't have gps but it will track a heading or uh, if you program a frequency into your nav radios which we're going to be doing today uh, the frequency we're going to be tracking is 112.6 for the FRAT VOR. So, uh, but first things first, uh, we got to get the plane started uh, so we can get on with our checklist and get running. So we're going to do a quick and dirty run today. We're not going to be using ATC because I don't want to be bogged down with that nonsense. And um, so that's it. So let's go ahead and get her started. Hit the fuel valve. Got that on. Hit the prime a couple times. Next thing we want to do is turn on our battery and alternator. Now that we've got that on, the beacon and strobe can come on. Over here to our radios, we're going to go ahead and turn the radios on. It doesn't matter how loud they are because uh, we're not going to be using ATC. And we'll come down here and turn our transponder on standby. Hit the ADF volume on a little bit to get that to come on. Now here, I'm going to show you this real quick. Uh, on these breakers, if I pull out number two breaker, look, our radio just went off. We turn number two back on, radio comes back on and the dial resets itself. It's pretty cool. All right, so the first thing to get this bad boy started is we're gonna go ahead and push the mixture in full. We're gonna crack the throttle. We got our beacon and strobe light on. We've already primed the engine, so let's give that key a crank and let her turn over. All right. So while the engine's warming up, we're gonna come over here and just set our altimeter. We're gonna hit the B button on the keyboard and that will go ahead and set that out for us. As you'll notice in the new update, uh, we can now see the actual degrees when we hover over a dial. So you're not guessing anymore. It actually tells you that information again. Pretty cool. Uh, down here on the JP Logistics mod, uh, right here you can turn this on. I know the button's kind of hard to see. But this will actually uh, give you a nautical mile range and how uh, many minutes uh, you are from that frequency that you put in through the radio up here. So again, uh, the radio was 112.6, so 
so we're going to go ahead and put in 112.6. Pop that into the radio. And one of the things that you're going to see come right up here is it already pulled up that FRAT VOR. And uh, so now to figure out whether you're heading towards this VOR or if you're going away from the VOR, which is, again, very important knowledge to know, uh, is you're going to turn this OBS dial to your current heading. So we'll call it 29 or 0. So if we turn this OBS dial here, I'm going to do it uh, on my Bravo Throttle Quadrant. 29 or 0. Okay. So now that we got this programmed on 29 or 0 at our current heading, which we're going to verify with the compass up here, uh, we can actually see now that the VOR is in front of us and it's off to our left over here. So, um, and now here's where things can get tricky. If you accidentally get this set in the reverse position, I'm going to show you what will happen. All right, so now you can actually see that uh, we've almost got this online. If I keep going, uh, it's going to pull us right center, and you see this arrow uh, that it's behind us. If you're, if you think the VOR is in front of you and you're heading towards it, and um, this is showing it's behind you, well, it'll still keep you on the correct path, but everything, all of your inputs are going to be opposite. So if this line is off to your right, that doesn't mean you're off course to the left, that means you're actually off to the right, so you would be doing everything opposite. So that's one of the biggest things of why you need to figure out whether you're going to a VOR or away from a VOR, so you don't start really kind of playing catch up with yourself, because if that needle is, say, right over here, and you feel that you're off, you think you're off to the left, so you're going to turn right a little bit to bring this needle back in the center, what will happen is this needle will then get further and further out and you'll actually be tracking further and further away from where you want to go to. So that's why it's really important to figure out the direction of the VOR that you're tracking and the direction it is to where you are. All right, so we know that um, according to our map that we're going to be using here today, uh, we're going to be tracking the VOR at a course of 245 in that really doesn't matter so much as the actual course out because our destination that's right here um, that's what really matters and we know that once we get to the VOR no matter which way we're coming into this VOR at once we get there we're going to turn to a heading of 201 to get to the actual airport itself so even if we were to fly out here and come down here and do a little joyriding it doesn't really matter um, it is going to change our tracking path which means uh, so if we were down here and we're going to be tracking in, we're probably going to be tracking at around a 300 heading to get up to that VOR. Once we get there, we'll turn 201 to get to our airport. So again, uh, you'll see how this all works once we get up in the air. And uh, let's stop talking about it and let's do it. So we'll go ahead and uh, turn our transponder into the on position. Actually, we'll flip it into alt. And... Uh, Let's get taxiing down the runway here. Um, so, first thing we want to do to get taxiing is uh, hit the parking brake off, then we'll hit our brakes, go ahead and adjust our trim to where we want it, into the takeoff position. We can go ahead and adjust our flaps down in the 10 degree position, and we are all set for takeoff. Check left, check right, we look good. Let's give some throttle and do a little dance. So it looks like we have the runway right here. But according to the metadata, we've got wind at our behind. So we're going to taxi down to the end of the runway here and uh, make a little Yui. And then we will then take off from there. In the meantime, we're not going to worry about this OBS dial or the VOR or the VOR dial here until we get up into the air. And um, once we get settled there, we will then go ahead and uh, get our bearings of where we are to or from that VOR and uh, start making our way there. And we'll show you how this thing works. Now you can see right down here in the uh, status indicator, we're 13.1 miles away from that VOR and about uh, 
38 minutes at this current speed. <laughs> so uh, that'll change uh, once we get up in the air. So don't worry, everybody. The other cool thing is, can you hear the, th the engines? If I close these windows, you hear it just got a little bit quieter in here. Alright, so let's turn. The other cool thing is this plane turns on a dime. Alright, now as you can see we've got some pretty high mountains in front of us and it looks like uh, the direction we're going to be going is that way. So we're probably going to take a path down here so we can gain some altitude. Then we will uh, find that uh, track to the VOR and start making our way there. So. Let's go ahead and adjust full throttle, put our nav lights on, we should have did that before. Again, this is a rough and dirty flight here, we're not following any procedures other than VOR tracking. So we're going to keep it straight down the runway here, hopefully. A little left aileron, and start pull back slightly on the stick, straighten up the controls. All right, looks good. We're gonna leave the flaps down in the 10 degree position for a little bit uh, until we get some speed and altitude, and then we'll go ahead and pull the flaps up. Now we knew the general direction from the airport which we're in right now is a course of 245. So uh, we're just gonna keep that in mind. So we're almost on course to go to that VOR. So while we're uh, making some headway here, uh, let's go ahead and adjust this VOR dial to our course in which we're going right now, which would be just about due west. So, if we turn that to due west, that tells us right here that our VOR is directly in front of us, which is great. So now what we're going to do is continue turning this dial. And so we're just about centered on that, 233. So we're going to turn 233 to keep this centered, and if we do that, we will track right to the VOR. Now we've got some altitude, we're gonna go ahead and pull up our flaps. We're now gonna set our heading bug to 233. Oops. about there 232 233 two, so that's a 233 three, and that's a 233 three. so we're just about on course come down here to the autopilot we can hit the AP on button and we can hit the altitude button all right and that should keep us at our current altitude and right now this is uh, actually set up in nav mode so it is now tracking our VOR that we have set in here for us. So uh, now that that's tracking us, we can now pull back on the throttle a bit, and we see we got about nine and a half miles to go. And we are on a course of 233, heading to the VOR, which is right here, and we've set our heading bug to 233 as well. Now, here's what's going to be a little trick that we're gonna use for the autopilot. Again, it doesn't really matter which direction you're coming in. And actually, uh, 233 means that we're somewhere up here right now coming down into the VOR. Again, it really doesn't matter in which direction we're coming into it. What matters is once we get there. So how we're going to use the autopilot to help us out is once we get a little bit closer, I would say about a mile to the VOR, we're going to set our heading to 201. And why we're going to do that is 
uh, before we get to the VOR, we're going to switch into heading mode. Now we're going to start our turn about a half a mile out of the VOR so that it can almost go this way and then we can intercept the path on the other side of the VOR coming out. Here's the reason. Um, as you learned from our first VOR course, when you fly over a VOR, your gauges are going to go haywire and it's going to take a couple seconds for them to figure out. Once you pass over that VOR and overshoot it, well, we're only six miles from this airport. So if we overshoot by a mile or two, it's going to take us another mile or two to get back on course. And by that point, you're now going to overshoot that runway going into that airport. So what we that's the reason why we're going to turn early. And then once we make that turn and our VOR dial comes back into play, then we will switch back into nav mode and regain our intercept course to uh, FRAT Municipal. So that's going to be the plan, and uh, hopefully everything works as it's supposed to today. As you can hear, we open the windows, the noise gets a little bit louder, and we can just take in the scenery out there. So the elevation of the airport that we're going to is about 1276. So if we go about a thousand feet over that, uh, should be pretty good. Uh, so 1276, and uh, we are at about uh, what 2600. So we're pretty good. All right. So altitude looks good. Everything looks good. We're about 3.7 miles from the VOR. What we're going to do right now is turn our heading bug to 201. All right, are we almost there? Okay, so now we have our heading bug here set at 201. We're about 3.1 miles out of the VOR right now. Yeah, we're still on course. GPS is holding nicely, holding right around 2,600 feet. So everything uh, should be pretty nice. Now, once we do make this turn at the VOR, we've only got six miles to the airport. So we're probably uh, going to start descending about a mile or so uh, after that turn. So it's going to come pretty quick uh, when it does happen. Uh, oh, and by the way, if anybody has any questions while we're going through this, and I'm not explaining anything uh, as clear as, as you need it, Go ahead and post a comment down below in the comments section. I'd love to answer your question for you and try to help you out so you can better understand uh, VOR tracking. And again, if this is your first time joining us today, I highly suggest you check out our first uh, VOR video. Again, the uh, link will be down in the description. But I do want to welcome everybody for joining us today on our video. And uh, thanks everybody for supporting the channel. And if you don't mind, go down there and hit that thumbs up button really helps us out and lets us know we're doing a great job. And by the way, I hope everybody likes this uh, JP Logistics mod. Uh, it's a really cool mod for the Cessna. It does add some different flight characteristics and also all the cool goodies that you see in the cockpit along with the autopilot. Uh, it's a really, really handy tool. Uh, so go ahead and check that down in the descriptions as well. So we're almost down here at half a mile. We're going to go ahead and switch to heading mode now. While we're switching to heading mode, we're going to turn this to that course of 201. Now, as soon as we pass that VOR and this flips on us, it just did just now. So now what we can do is come back over and hit our nav button. And that will pull us back onto our course of our 201 radial out of the VOR. So now uh, a lot of people are going to get confused between what is a course and what is a heading. Heading is the actual direction that uh, you have the plane pointed. Course is the actual direction the plane is going. So if you're getting pushed by wind that can change uh, the direction of the plane. So just because you're going a certain heading doesn't mean you're on the same course. And right up in front of us, it brought us right in line with the runway, which is perfect. So we're going to go ahead and turn that autopilot off right now. We don't need that anymore. We can see it. 
and all we have to do is start taking out some throttle and we will gradually start descending and that beeping that you hear is the autopilot making some noise it likes to do that from time to time hope everybody enjoying the video so far today Alright, so what I like to do is I like to line up the nose of my aircraft to the very tip of the runway. Uh, that gets me on a general course of uh, my descent of where I need to go. And I'm always adjusting my trim right down here along uh, the way. I'm using my Bravo throttle quadrant to do that. That's why you don't see me panning down and trimming it with the mouse. Uh, makes it a little bit easier for me to do so. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and bring the throttle all the way down now and bring our trim up because the nose is going to want to drop on us and add our 10 degrees of flaps all right now you can see down here the pappy lights uh, we have four white and yeah we have four white what you would like to see uh, would be two red and two white that tells you uh, that you're all right you're right on the correct glide path so we're a little bit high that's okay i'm going to go ahead and dump our second notch of flaps We'll hold off on a third until we get a little bit closer. We've got our two red and two white now. It means we're all right. I'm just going to trim us up a bit and add a little bit of throttle. Try to maintain that course a bit. And as you pick the nose up, the speed's going to drop, so you just want to maintain that just right around 60 knots or so. Looks like we're a little low, but that's okay. We're not a big airliner, so it don't really matter that whole much. Alright, we're going to go ahead and drop our last stage of flaps down. It's going to bring that nose up just a hair, and our speed's going to start dropping on us. Just maintain that speed. 50 to 60 knots on the way in. i try to keep it up a little bit. But when you drop that last stage of flaps, it really really slows you down. All right, we're almost coming in for our touchdown. I'm going to pull back on the throttle. Flare just a bit. And we land her. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all there is to it for today. So I think we're going to end the video here today. Again, if you have any questions, please post them down below. I will be more than happy to answer those for you. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us on the video. Please like, share, and subscribe with your friends. And as always, keep the blue side up. We'll see you on the next one.